Joining us now, Nenal al Kidwai, former country head and group general manager of HSBC India and former president of FIKI. Thanks, ma'am, very much for being with us. A few weeks back, we seemed to be doing so well uh, when the lockdown was taking place, but then obviously there was a realization that we can't have a lockdown forever and the economy needed to be restarted even if somewhat, slightly. But is that at one level a move which has cost us lives, which is uh, something which has resulted in these numbers getting much larger than what we had hoped they would? Only time will tell whether these decisions were the right ones or not. But on the face of it, the initial lockdown was important to allow us as a nation to get prepared. Uh, hospitals, uh, additional facilities, and I think one thing which is not said enough of is just doctors themselves becoming familiar with what medication works in what situation. Because three months down the line, we have much more knowledge of what other countries are doing and also what has worked for the few patients that came in then. We can't stay in perennial lockdown. Uh, it's too huge a cost for the economy and the poor in our country pay the heaviest price, as we have seen with migrant labor and others. So it was a given that we would have to open up. But having to open up at a time where we are better prepared, knowing that numbers will go up when you open up, is, I think, the right uh, way to look at this. Uh, that we as citizens can be more disciplined, I think, is also a given. Uh, many of us are throwing caution to the winds. Uh, I see people uh, on television uh, being, you know, highlighted by you without masks, uh, people uh, clustering together in markets in situations where it need not be so. Uh, so I think we, too, as citizens, need to do our bit. Uh, clearly, and all this discussion and support of our health workers, kudos to these men and women who are out there fighting for us. They must be so tired run into a period now, as it is, of hard work and with numbers only going up. Uh, my heart goes out to them. And the fact that we can even have people attacking them and seeing them as uh, aliens in their communities when they return to rest is just plain ridiculous. Uh, we have to, in fact, as also has happened right. in some communities where we've seen lines of people clapping as they return is exactly the way we need to treat them. But I want to just say there are some very good things that are coming out sure. of this. Uh, I work in the sanitation space, as you know, through the India Sanitation Coalition. And for the last five years, uh, we have been screaming and shouting from rooftops about the whole wash agenda, uh, cleaning hands, washing, uh, maintaining toilets, of course, and the provision of toilets, and now mm. increasingly the treatment of toilets. And the, I was beginning to worry that the messaging around the whole wash agenda was beginning to lose uh, momentum because the country had achieved quite well on the ODF uh, criteria, the uh, open defecation right. free criteria. It had set itself. The good news is that all that training, all that work is right back at the forefront. And I think we were just able to tweak that right. communication in a way that enabled people to get out there and remind okay. them how to wash their hands and also the provision of water, which right. is quite That's... central to the government's yeah. agenda going forward, which has right. to be seen hand in hand with the hand washing one. Right. No, that's that's good to hear. Uh, just uh, very quickly, Srinivas and Jain here, ma'am. Uh, just to ask you that, uh, do you think that corporate India, I know that people have contributed to, to you know, to fighting the virus, uh, but do you think that corporate India can do more in, in contributing to this fight? So I think for corporate India that is struggling uh, to keep its head above water, uh, it's, it's not an easy time to contribute to causes. But having said that, the way companies have risen to the challenge is enormous. And it's happened on two fronts. One is uh, funds that went into the PM Cares Fund or government programs at the state level uh, as support was required. And many companies have signed checks to uh, help and support what was the immediate need that the government asked for. Uh, others are doing it also in terms of the way they train and treat their own staff. Uh, 
paying employees even while they were shut. Many have done this at grave cost. Many can't do it, frankly. But the fact is that putting that helping hand out to employees and helping with equipment, helping with care, helping with uh, whatever the families need is another way, which is the immediate community of employees and the communities around factories where many companies have very entrenched programs. I can tell you the companies that boards I'm on are working very closely with the communities around the factories in self-interest, of course, also, because it keeps their factories free, but very much helping in terms of the delivery of hygiene and health and water in the communities around where they work. So that becomes another space. And the third is the companies that just said, hey, if nobody's going to be buying our auto parts or buying our textiles, let's just convert to manufacturing PPE and ventilators or sanit uh, sanitizers. So you've seen conversions very quickly. Absolutely. And you could argue that it is a for-profit model, but hey, it was done so quickly, I think also, because there was as much heart in it as head and mind. बिल्कुल नैना जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अपना समय हमें देने के लिए और वाकई में सामने रखने के लिए कि किस तरह से उद्योग जगत भी अपने आप को इस कोविड 19 में लगातार बदल रहा है और प्रयोग कर रहा है